Okay, we're back. We're live. It's a two o'clock block today. For Hawaii, the state of clean energy. And we are honored to have on the show, remote from Hilo, Hawaii, Richard Ha, who's been in and around energy for a long time, maybe almost 200 years, I think. Uh, hi, Richard. How are you? And happy <laughs> hey, birthday. Good. Hey, hey, thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so we want to talk about geothermal today. It's, it's, a, it's a very important subject. And uh, it, it's not only important in the sense of the current um, you know portfolio of renewable energy it's important in the historical sense because we've been talking about geothermal we've been dealing with it it's been through a, a whole history of its of its own and we ought to follow it anyway just to see how it's doing so the question to pose here is will pgv operate by the end of the year indeed the end of the year is fast upon us <laughs> yeah no kid <laughs> no so kid. as far as i can see uh, everything looks like it, it could be, but you, you know, it's, it's like you say, it's uh, upon us. So, and they've got two things they need to do. One is they got to uh, get approval from the PUC to hook up the lines, which I don't think looks is, is that, that difficult. Um, and then the second thing they need to do is approve the RFP. Mm. And the RFP is to um, renegotiate the initial 25 megawatts, which is tied to oil. So they're negotiating right now to, to find a number that's uh, not tied to oil. Yeah, as I, as I recall, there was uh, some, some uh, problem with the fact that their original uh, purchase power agreement was at a very rich price, a very rich calculation. That's what, I guess that's what you mean when you say yeah. tied to oil. And, um, yep. and so there was, there was, there was resistance about continuing that without reviewing it and maybe changing it. So it looks like they have been flexible enough, maybe they had to be flexible enough, uh, to reconsider and renegotiate uh, the price that, what, uh, Hawaiian Electric would pay uh, yeah. for their geothermal uh, energy, yeah? Yeah, and right now they're paying 16 cents a kilowatt hour for oil generated power. So, PGV will probably come in around half of that, oh, I guess. That would be pretty attractive, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. That's for, for stable, firm power? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Well, why don't you take a moment and describe for our viewers stable, firm, dispatchable. What is special in that, in that regard about uh, Pune Geothermal? Yeah, so, so they've got this constant uh, uh, Electricity that's uh, coming up from uh, they make it from the heat of the earth, so so it's just coming up all day long, all night for five hundred thousand years. So the what the uh, Helco wants is if something unexpected happens, they they want to be able to turn it on immediately. Mm. So so that that's the big part of it, and and they can do it. The question then becomes, what do they do uh, with the power when they're not using it? Mm -hmm. And they haven't done anything with it to this point. And what we're saying is, why don't you make hydrogen and store it? Because in, in effect, it's free. Because you're throwing it away anyway. Well, let's talk about that. Um, because, I, you know, it's interesting that, you know, we've been talking about uh, geothermal for, oh, well, through my life and energy, which is like 20 years. Um, but even before, when, when P PGV was starts first started, which I guess was in the 80s or the early 90s. Um, and, you know, up till this point, we never really put it together with the idea of uh, taking the curtailed energy, because there's always been a certain amount of curtailment, um, and uh, making hydrogen out of it. This is a new and really, um, really romantic thought that we could actually have a side benefit uh, and lose nothing, you know, always have yeah. something, some benefit coming out of uh, the geothermal. How, how would that work, though, mechanically? How would that work in terms of a, what do you want to call it, a, an energy flow? What would they do to make it happen? Okay, so so they uh, they have this electricity that they're not using. They run it through an electrolyzer. The electrolyzer runs it through um, water and gets hydrogen out. And they they keep the hydrogen. They store the hydrogen. And then you can transport it in trucks and however. Uh, is is the uh, is the way you want to transport it, but uh, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. So you say trucks, or was it tanks? I mean, or was it tanks on the trucks? 
Yeah, tanks on the trucks is what I meant. You know, if you imagine a propane tank, specially built and stuff like that. Yeah, I've seen those tanks at uh, uh, Hawaii uh, HCAT, Hawaii mm. Center for Advanced Transportation Technologies. And let me try to remember how big they are. They're probably around, uh, what, eight feet, maybe eight feet long and maybe um, two feet in diameter or foot and a half in diameter. And they're, they're steel, they're not going anywhere. And uh, mm -hmm. they contain uh, hydrogen, what, is liquefied? Uh, so there's a lot of hydrogen in the tank. Am I right about that? Yeah, but, but I gotta uh, get technical folks to ask about, you know, for that kind of detail. Mm -hmm. But I, I, what I read is there are various different sizes of tanks. Mm -hmm. and, and like you say, though, if you squeeze them down and it becomes more dense, it's more efficient, yeah. Yeah, sure. So you have to have something that'll squeeze them down. So the other thing you mentioned a, a minute ago was a, something called an electrolyzer. Can you tell our viewers what that does and how you get one? Can I go down to Sears? Sears, Sears is over. Can I go down to <laughs> Costco and get one? <laughs> well, you know, there are people that, that make, make them. And very interesting. Uh, and you, you've, uh, Stan has had uh, people on his show describe their electrolyzers, you know, and, and so one of the more interesting ones was from uh, Millennium Rain uh, Hydrogen. Mm. And the reason I find that interesting is because it's made in, in modules. So if you got a f small demand, you get the, f the first uh, module. Mm -hmm. And if the demand increases, you just attach another one and another one. And then later on, when you get some more customers, let's say you have a hydrogen fueling station. Yeah. Then you go and site yourself and buy the land and whatever and set up a more uh, robust station. So so it's modular, so you can you, you don't have to invest the big money up front like you would think. Yeah, no, that's great. That's really a great refinement of the whole system. Because I remember <laughs> uh, Hank Rogers had one. Um, I don't know what he paid for his, but uh, he was he was lighting his his ranch or farm up there and uh, on yeah. the west side of uh, the Big Island and. And uh, you're using hydrogen, and those things are like hundreds of thousands of dollars to buy. So we have to, you know, either do the modular thing that you mentioned, which probably makes mm -hmm. it cheaper, or we have yeah. to find a way to, to do that conversion in, in an electrolyzer that isn't too expensive. Because we have mm -hmm. to, we, we have to have these working on a commercial and residential basis, both. Because the, the curtailment thing you describe, Richard, could also apply to a single-family residence which had solar on a roof. It's a way of storage, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's a matter of just cost, though, if it makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so, okay, so here I am. I'm down in Pune, um, and I'm, I'm getting curtailed. Uh, Hawaiian Electric does not want all my, all my power, and it, uh, I guess it shuts it off or it tells me to shut off, uh, you know, the supply of power from uh, the geothermal facility. Uh, I said, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create some hydrogen now. And I, I, I create hydrogen and I put it in tanks. Now, and you said the tanks go on trucks. And that only <clears throat> talks about the, the big island, I suppose. Um, but you could also take those tanks and ship them. Um, and I guess the question is, uh, how hard is it to ship them? Uh, and at the other end, when they arrive somewhere, uh, how hard is it to use them? Uh, is there any infrastructure right now to use them? Uh, do I have to build it? And what does it look like? You know, on this island, except for uh, Hank Rogers' uh, uh, operation there, the next thing coming up is the county is, is getting ready uh, to, to activate their uh, refilling station down there at Delha mm -hmm. for buses. So the buses are coming pretty soon, and they're getting ready to, to, to get that. A uh, uh, station in operation. The only thing about that operation is that they're using Helco's uh, full cost electricity to make the hydrogen. So they might get it for 30 something cents. Mm. And then you got to add the cost of converting it, et cetera. But doing it this way, where they do it on the, on the, uh, 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 at the geothermal plant with the curtailed electricity, the cost is dramatically different because it's essentially free. So all they got to do is add the, the, the let's say that the, they, they settle at uh, eight cents a kilowatt hour, or 10 cents or something like that. Yeah. That the other stuff is basically free. They could sell it cheaper. And, and the important thing to remember is that if you 
of filling up your car with hydrogen, and that hydrogen costs 10 cents a kilowatt hour, you're equal to gasoline. So now, if, if you're getting it for six cents, let's say, then the question is, can you get it transported for four cents? Mm -hmm. Or would you have to wait until natural gas prices go up? Because that's your competition, yeah? Right. Hydrogen for something else. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. they cannot compete. You know, this is, this is incredible. They cannot compete because they have to buy the natural gas, which is a finite resource. They have to take the hydrogen out. Then they have to um, do something with the carbon. Either they let it go in the air and call it gray hydrogen, or then they have to, or, or they have to deal with it. Mm -hmm. All along the way, the cost is being built up. So yeah. if they try to sell, send that to Hawaii and compete, there's no way. Yeah, well, this is very interesting because there's something in uh, I think it was Civil Beat this morning, um, you know, about Hawaii gas, and there's a <clears throat> move with the legislature, you know, uh, to I guess to, that would have the possible effect of, of uh, making it harder for Hawaii gas to create uh, hydrogen that way. Hawaii gas wants to remain relevant, so they want to create hydrogen. Not clear <coughs> the legislature is going to let them have, have that chance, uh, and that will, yeah. that will hurt them. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm thinking that uh, your financial analysis, your economic analysis, really, that's the analysis of the day. But if you have mm -hmm. geothermal type hydrogen, where you, you get it, you know, much cheaper, uh, that, that, that would be the best possible source, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's for the so whole green. State. Yeah. yeah, so the, the way you describe it is the geothermal source is green hydrogen mm -hmm. versus the other stuff is gray hydrogen. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. And, and with, with the green hydrogen, there is no fossil fuel involved uh, at any point in the process. Right, exactly. Yeah. No, no carbon at all, yes. So uh, it all sounds pretty attractive, uh, but I, I guess to go back to the notion of infrastructure, um, in order to use it, uh, well, for that matter, to uh, use it as a storage facility, a storage capacity uh, for creating, uh, you know, uh, electricity to, <clears throat> to uh, light homes and the like, uh, you have to have uh, some kind of process plant uh, or at least a plant where you can offload the hydrogen and burn it and, and create new electricity. Um, wh whatever purpose it was, you'd have to have a place that would receive it. And, yep. and that place would have to be, uh, you know, uh, on the island, I think, uh, where you're going to use it. So yep. we, have to, we have to get to the point, I think if this is really going to be successful, we have to get to the point of building that infrastructure. So my question is, what does it look like? Where is it exactly and who builds it? Yeah, so what, what it would look like is a hydrogen refueling station, because it's a chicken and the egg kind of a thing. Uh -huh. If you have a refueling station, people, you could buy a car. If mm -hmm. you don't have a refueling station, nobody will have to buy a hydrogen car. Yeah. So, so how many refueling stations would you need? And we've been having this conversation, probably around five, and you could you know, go all around the island pretty safely. Um, and and these, uh, if you say, would say that of all the cars on the island, and you would get ten percent of them um, hydrogen within X amount of years, then you can backtrack as to how how large your uh, electrolyzer has got to be, mm -hmm. and then and then you got to come up with a cost because somebody has got to invest in it. Um, I don't know for sure, but tentatively, we're talking two million for five stations, which mm -hmm. is quite cheap, you know. Actually, mm -hmm. so so. But then, what would you, what would that look like? Would you rather have some mainland or foreign investors come in and buy and, and develop the whole thing? I I would much prefer to have it be local investors and keep the money in our economy. Yeah, why not? We know the story here. And there are, there are organizations uh, that can afford that, um, yeah. and it benefits, uh, it's, it's only really for the local market, although I want to mm -hmm. talk to you about the, the wider market. And, um, mm -hmm. and for, you know, for that matter, it, it, um, this is part of our renewable energy initiative, and um, let's do it, let's do it here, let's do it now, let's, let's keep control of it. You know, it's so easy uh, to say, well, if somebody else come in and do it, we don't, we don't want to spend the money. Um, but that's not a good idea, especially with energy. We should be 
doing it ourselves and, and enjoying the not only the, the benefits but the profits, you know, yeah, well, yeah, eventually absolutely. like that. Yeah. Yeah, rotated in our economy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So Richard, let's take a one minute break, okay? We'll come back and I want to talk some more about how you make this happen. Uh, from mm -hmm. you know now till when it happens, and and the implications for the state of making it happen. Because when you think about it, this is a very attractive possibility, uh, mm -hmm. one that one that could actually realize some of the dreams, the energy dreams we've had uh, for a long time. Richard Ha, yeah, no joining us by phone from uh, Hilo. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, everyone. I'm Christine Linders, and this is Think Tech Hawaii. My show is Movement Matters, and this is a show brought to you to talk about how to get rid of things like your low back pain, scoliosis, TMJ dysfunction, ankle sprains, pretty much anything that you can do with your body or hurt your body. I am here to bring to you the cutting edge strategies that you can do right now easily on your own to help get out of pain and get back to doing what you love. Life is better when you listen to your physical therapist. Tune in Tuesdays at 11 a.m. every other week for Movement Matters. Aloha. Aloha, my name is Duration. You are watching Think Tech Hawaii. I will be hosting a show here every other Wednesday at 1 p.m. And we will be talking to a lot of experts and guests around sustainability, social justice, the future here in Hawaii, progressive politics, and a whole lot more. So please tune in and thank you for watching Think Tech Hawaii. Okay, Richard Ha, who joins us by phone from Hilo, which is, uh, some say that's where God lives, you know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> and um, so, you know, talk about the Big Island for a minute. Talk about how it would work with cars, because, you know, the, you know, there's a lot of people who like electric cars, but electric cars are not the same as hydrogen cars. There's a difference. There's a difference in range and range, range anxiety. And especially in a place like the Big Island, where people are very concerned that their electric cars, you know, won't get them from South Point to Hilo and back again, and they'll run out of electric along the way. But that's not necessarily so with hydrogen, right? Yeah, if you got this patient sighted uh, uh, well, then there's no problem there. And not only that, it's very convenient because it doesn't take very long to fill up. You don't have, you know, mm. long charges and stuff like that. Yeah, well, it sounds to me, actually, like that $2 million you mentioned is a really good investment because people are going to want to do this. At the end of the day, not only is it good for climate change, but it's good economics to get a hydrogen car, uh, especially on the Big Island, and then have a few uh, uh, fueling stations and, and get around the Big Island at, a, at a, actually a cost per mile. Am I right about this? A cost per mile, which is less, less than gas. Am I right? Um, yeah, depending on, on how you, how, yeah, that's the way it looks, yeah. And yeah. over the long run, of course, it'll be uh, less than gas, no, no question about it. Yeah. Um, yeah, so, so let's say you have five, you, know, you, 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 you want to invest and put in five stations. You know, did you see that uh, PBS special, the two-hour special with uh, uh, Dwayne Caruso folks? No, they, I, know, they, I know the story, but I didn't see it yet. So tell, yeah, us, it, tell it, us about it. it, it it was really good because when you see those people talk, they were really, really concerned about the, the, the people of Hawaii. Yeah, not, they, they weren't talking about making money for themselves. They were just concerned about the people of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Now, these are the kind of folks, not necessarily them, but anybody who has that kind of a feeling, we would love to see invest in, 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 in a company like uh, putting that uh, refueling stations together. You know, we don't know, we cannot guarantee that you're going to get your money back in X amount of time. Because a lot of this stuff will have to be, you're doing it for future generations, and you believe that it'll, it'll, it'll be a good, good thing for, mm -hmm. for future generations and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so anyway, so that's the general idea. So if we can pull people together, we've got folks from the mainland that's willing to come down and talk and give a presentation and, and lay out how the whole thing looks. Yeah, yeah, with design, designs and maybe technology. But it strikes me that if, you know, this hasn't really happened, except in, you know, certain circumstances, if we, the people of Hawaii, invest in energy <laughs> facilities, especially in this one, 
this kind of facility, hydrogen facility, then we care about it. And then we know about it, we learn about it. Uh, and if we do that, then we're more committed to it. And we're more yeah. aware of the possibilities going down the road. We're more aware of, of, of you know, reaching our goals, our state goals. Because right now, I don't, I don't, if you ask the man on the street, you know, what he thought about it, he wouldn't be all that excited. There was excitement a few years ago, but not necessarily now. So if people, the ordinary person or the ordinary business person, the ordinary investor, if you will, um, gets involved in Hawaii projects, uh, manageable investments, manageable projects like this, then uh, more people are going to be involved. The state is going to be more committed. It's all good. It's all good. So yeah. my, my, my sense of it is that the Big Island, because of Puna Geothermal Venture, because of the hydrogen there, um, because of the possibility of putting it in the tanks, the curtail energy in the tanks, and then moving it around the island, Big Island, and having, uh, you know, say half a dozen or say five uh, 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 hydrogen stations, all of a sudden you've changed everything in terms of passenger transportation. Uh, oh, what yeah. that means is, uh, you know, I can buy a car. We, we should talk about cars. I can buy a mm -hmm. hydrogen car. I can get relatively cheap transportation. I can go everywhere. I don't worry about range anxiety. And it's a great experiment. That taken, oh, absolutely. Yeah, and then taken together with the buses that are now coming out. I mean, the mm -hmm. whole island, the big island, could be a hydrogen, hydrogen island, no? Yeah, no kid, you know, and, and that's what's so exciting about it because it plays right into climate change. Yeah. You know, we'll be the example for the world yeah. because all of a sudden you've got, a, you know, just one island self-enclosed as an example. Yeah. Boy, that, that is really some kind of, you know, as a matter of fact, we got all excited. I called up Hank Rogers and said, hey, Hank, can you bring Greta Thurman? I was just <laughs> going to say that. I was, that's what Hank ought to do. We ought to bring her here. I'm sure yeah. we can pitch her and she would come here because, you know, we are so simpatico with her. <laughs> We're thinking alike here. <laughs> We're thinking alike for sure. We've been thinking that for the last several weeks. So, okay, so, so we can do this. We can, you know, start building this infrastructure, get investors, local investors, and, uh, you know, and have, have it working. But in the meantime, okay, if I go down to Servco, say, which controls the Mirai, uh, mm -hmm. one, or one of its uh, sub-dealers, whoever that might be, um, and, I, and I ask for a Mirai, Mirai's going to cost me 50000 plus, and uh, there may not be a lot of Mirais uh, available because Mirais are popular elsewhere in California, I guess. And it's not like they have an, you know, an unlimited supply of Mirais. Um, and what I, what I think is missing in this, uh, in this whole uh, formula is the, is, is the idea that you can go down and, and buy one. You can buy a, a hydrogen car of some kind. So can you talk to me about the availability of either Mirais or any other hydrogen car right now and whether I should go and look for one and find one and buy one right now? You know, uh, interesting you, you mentioned it because uh, Paul Pontio had mentioned in, in one of his tours, you know, that uh, they're selling uh, secondhand uh, hydrogen cars on the mainland because, you know, the, the period of time where you're guaranteed X amount for your fuel um, for something like 18000 So he thought it was a, a good deal. But, uh, I, you know, it's not. I, I'm just saying that for 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 somebody who's a real fan, yeah, I, like I would do it. But mm -hmm. uh, for the average person, I, I don't know what. At some point, it's it's going to build up stronger and stronger because you know, for the 2020 Olympics, Japan is going to roll out buses, and you know, they they're going full on to be a hydrogen society, yeah. Mm. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah. That's great. Oh, yeah. yeah. So they've had two conferences, world conferences. And, and I, I, I followed, you know, with the presentation and stuff like that. It's really incredible. I, I want to go the next time. Well, you, let me know. Maybe we can go for your next birthday, huh? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I mean, that's the problem, though, because we, we, have to, um, we have to make them notice us. I mean, I really don't like the idea that we can't get a bigger, bigger allocation of hydrogen cars from, the, you know, the, yeah. the, the dealerships on the mainland. And so, uh, you know, you can't sell if you don't have them. And so, yeah, and, and this one here is really good because if you are competitive uh, price-wise with gasoline, then people will want to buy it. Yeah, sure. And then, and then all of a sudden you're an example for the rest of the world. Maybe people want to bring their cars here to, to, to demonstrate it and stuff like that. 
Well, yes, and I think, you know, I think we ought to try to brand uh, the Big Island as the Hydrogen Island um, yeah. and talk about the buses a lot, uh, mm -hmm. talk about the availability of Pune Geothermal Venture and, uh, and the curtailed hydrogen there and, uh, and these stations. And, you know, like make it known that th this is a great place for the uh, uh, hydrogen car manufacturers to uh, mm -hmm. allocate some cars. Furthermore, yeah. Richard, uh, you know, you're, you're, a, you're a real go-getter person, and I know it's not beyond, uh, you know, the possibility that you would go and talk to them and say, mm -hmm. hey, how about, you know, taking a look at the Big Island, because uh, you should be selling more cars, more hydrogen cars on the Big Island. Let's, yeah. make, it, let's make a deal, you know, with, with uh, Toyota or anyone else who's making um, uh, hydrogen cars. And then mm -hmm. all of a sudden, you know, then they, they get into the same boat, of, of treating the big island as the hydrogen island and, and selling cars and then showing the world, you know, that this is a very workable arrangement. Yeah, so, so another thing that this is a, a benefit is that you could do a, a geothermal up on the slopes of Manukya, mm -hmm. on Hawaiian homeless lands. Mm -hmm. And why that's significant is because uh, you can help the Hawaiians get on the land using the geothermal because they own the the, the uh, the, the resource. Mm -hmm. So they don't they don't pay royalties. So that's a million dollars a year for you know the equivalent of, of PGV. Mm -hmm. And then and then they make money from making that the hydrogen. And then they also can make money from exporting and and, and you know like Iceland. They they bring up uh, bauxite from Australia and then they use the heat and the cheap energy, cheap electricity to make aluminum and sell that on the world market. Mm -hmm. And then they use that to sub supplement their health costs as well as the education costs. And they just happen to be the third uh, healthiest, uh, happiest nation in the world. <laughs> yeah, I think there's some kind of connection there somewhere. <laughs> well, there's all kinds of things you can do with hydrogen and, and uh, geothermal. Uh, mm -hmm. I, um, I was in Iceland a year ago, and I noticed that... Uh, you know, all the big residential buildings, they all had hot water straight from the ground. No uh, kids, right? And they yeah. didn't have to pay anything for hot water. It was amazing. Um, yeah, and when you go into Reykjavik, you don't see overhead uh, power lines. Everything's on the ground. Yeah. It's pretty amazing, yeah. So, I mean, so what you're really saying is that we can look to geothermal for other things as well, mm -hmm. and we can find it in other places beyond Pune. Um, yeah, and we're and really take this, focus. for example. You know, so the county council today is talking about banning certain kinds of chemicals for weed control on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm a farmer. I, I, I'd like to see them retain it or at least show the, the numbers or, or show the science. But it's beyond that. So if, if they're going to do that, which, which is fine, then I would like to see a commitment to, to, for them to use hydrogen tractors to, to, to mow on the side of the road. Absolutely. And then, yeah. All that stuff, as much as of the uh, uh, the county and state vehicles as they can, make it hydrogen. Yep, yep. And, and we're on we're on that track. All we have to do is is, is push it and uh, mm -hmm. and brand mm -hmm. it uh, around the Big Island. Big Island be world famous for this, and so PGV will be a very important factor in the way in the branding and the way the Big Island works. One mm -hmm. last question before we run, though, and that is, you know, we did have this eruption a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. And it really, you know, threw things off uh, in many ways, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the people up there and also for PGV, obviously. And so we have to have a way to, to deal with that going forward to make this a long term reliable possibility. And mm -hmm. um, how do we do that? Uh, how do we how do we do that? Yeah, so so the, the first thing you need to do is to diversify geographically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So so because you they're right on the East Rift. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they'll probably be there for a very long time, but to be more safe, it'd be better to, to set up another plant uh, at a different location that, that is not uh, close to civilization and stuff like that. Ah, so we I can see do several saying. of those. I see yeah, what and you know what is really, really interesting is that I went to this, uh, 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 no, what was it now? Uh, let me... Hawaii Groundwater and Geothermal Resource Center. Uh -huh. I never knew that it existed. But you know, so I went up there yesterday, the day before yesterday. And then I, I talked to the lady who's in charge of it. And they've got tremendous resources. They just don't have support, money. 
And if any place the, the, our government could put money into is right there, because they can drill wells. They can do test wells. Yeah, to do, assess the resource. Because you know, in New Zealand, they, they have a whole bunch of those uh, wells drilled all over the place ready to get online. Mm -hmm. And the reason for it is because the, the resource is shallow. Mm -hmm. so, so we don't have one standing by, yeah? Well, you know, you mentioned, uh, you, you mentioned, uh, you know, the, the possibility of having Native Hawaiians enjoy this, uh, you know, this, mm -hmm. this enterprise. And it reminds yep. me of Millie Lonnie Trask, who wanted to get involved in geothermal a few years ago. Right. And right. Uh, right. maybe there's a real possibility to have them um, be part of this, be participants in it, and benefit by it. So that's a, that's a thought sure. we have to continue. Yep. So Richard, sure. we're out of time. Uh, but may I say, as I've said before, I always enjoy talking to you. It's always a great experience, and I hope we can do this again. I want to follow oh, geothermal yeah. and everything else you're looking at uh, you know, in, in future shows. Yeah, absolutely. Good fun, this. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> Richard Ha, okay. energy man who joins us from Hilo, Hawaii. Aloha, Richard. Okay, see you. Take care.